Well, a good Saturday morning to you. It's Dan. I want to welcome everyone to my home in the sticks, and I hope everybody's having a good Saturday. But over here in East Central Mississippi, touching 80 degrees again today, showing enough nice to be outside. Before we get started on today's video, I'm always going to say that if you are new to the channel, I want to welcome you. And if you return and just see what old Dan's got going on over her, I show sure enough thank you for coming back. Well, what I want to share with you and y'all today is, well, I come up with a do-it-yourself project for a common pest over here at the homestead. Give me a second, and I'll finish shows you. <laughs> Dan, what you done did now? Well, I'm here to tell you. Over here at the homestead, we store a lot of feed for all of our animals over here. And when you store uh, quantities of feed like that, the most common pest, at least for me over here, is rats. And we have a ton of rats over here. We also have a lot of field mice that uh, come onto the property. Haven't really seen uh, any mice in the shop, knock on wood, but we have seen a lot of rats and field mice in this feed shack behind me. So over the years, I've actually tried several different kinds of rat traps. I tried the glue traps. I tried these traps right here, big tomcat traps. I've tried the, uh, the granular uh, rat poison, things of that nature, tried it all. But the one thing that I have to be weary of is all the other animals that are on the property. Like him right there. So I had to stray away from using the granular uh, rat poisoning and sticky traps because Cash is showing up, try to get in and eat it, and something bad will happen to him. So for the last uh, week or so, I've been watching a bunch of videos on folks, and I never realized how many folks actually enjoy <laughs> making do-it-yourself rat traps. I was amazed at all of the videos that are out on YouTube. What I built is a culmination of uh, four or five videos that I watched and I tailored this to fit my needs and guess what? It worked. So let's get up into this feed shed. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, I set this trap last night, have one that is, uh, was, is KIA now. So if uh, you're squeamish about that, close your eyes on that. But let me show you this. So here is what I come up with. And it's uh, basically it's a five gallon rat trap with fall away, if you will. Uh, caught a rather big one in there last night. There he is down there. The reason why I built this is I just have a ton of rats that get in here. They climb and they run all up on this thing, all up on the rafters. Cash chases them around. We try to clean out all of the feed bags once we dump feed. This is just a bunch of junk, gardening stuff that I need to get out of here because the rats will actually get this stuff, start making nests and just taking over the feed shed. I had to get away from using these plastic garbage cans because the rats were actually chewing through them to get to the feed. So you can see we got a, I have a bunch of metal garbage cans in now now can't even mess with the feed or get to the feed and you can see there's a lot of rat drappings all over the place I have some on the floor so if you don't take command of this or control of it they will take over everything and just mess up a bunch of stuff you notice that the feed buckets are turned upside down we do that for a reason so the rats can't get in the feed buckets to lay their droppings and the drop rat droppings get mixed in with the uh, horse feed or the goat feed probably make them sick so you notice we got all these buckets turned upside down now what i'm going to do is i'm going to dispose of that rat uh, we don't rats are just a irritable pest uh, here on the homestead i don't do catch and release with uh rats they just they got to go uh chunk them out into the woods Somebody in the woods can eat them and maybe that'll help them. And I'm going to show you exactly how I made this uh, do-it-yourself rat trap. All right, let me show you how I built this. Pretty simple, pretty easy. More than likely, a bunch of all of the things that it took to make this you probably have at the homestead. So the first thing that you're going to need is a five-gallon bucket. And this was an old um, icing bucket that I got from a local bakery. 
you're gonna need some cardboard but what the thing about the cardboard is you want to find something that's rather thick see how thick that is so it's it's real rigid you need a piece of metal this is a coat hanger that I actually had and I snipped it off to make make it about this size right here I did find out that the diameter of the metal uh, really counts so you have to go smaller I don't know if you can see that but that is a coat hanger you need some type of uh, a piece of wood a rock something of that nature because this involves a counterbalance a glue gun and a drill of some sort to drill some holes and maybe a utility knife or a Dremel tool to notch out the bucket. So what I did was I actually took my cardboard and I traced out a circle, cut it out, made a little landing strip, if you will. Once I cut out my circle, I figured out where I wanted to put it, where I wanted to put this on the bucket, sat it down on top of the bucket. I made some marks with a Sharpie cut this out this cut has to be the same length as this and you want the same thickness if you can see that where it pretty much fits flush so I took my coat hanger actually sat this down on there and found a good pivot point I figured that would be a really good pivot point. Took my hanger, shoved it on through the cardboard. I drilled some holes out that correspond to here and here. Put it on in there. And it looks something like that. The trickiest part of making this is finding you a counterweight that will actually allow this platform to tilt back up. So what I did, I just played around with a bunch of pieces of wood and I found a piece, here's one just like it. I found a piece and I actually did some cutting on it. That's how much I actually cut off of it. And this was a piece of an old pressure treated 4x4 that I had laying around. And I hot glued that joker to the bottom of this landing right here. Now how I set this up in the feed shed is I actually get a little bit of this, this 9 grain chicken scratch. And I set a little bit right towards the edge. You have to be careful where you set it at because if you put this, this uh, bait too far it'll tip down and then you lose your bait and catch and you won't catch anything so you have to be cognizant of where you put your your bait and what happens is I've got mine you could build you a little uh, walkway or pathway leading up to this I know that the rats and mice like to jump around and stuff jump around on stuff in this feed shed so I actually put it right next to where I keep my scratch for my chickens. Old mouse will get up here, a rat will get up on here. He'll see that. He'll jump down, which is fine. Once he goes to walking, bam, he falls in. Since I don't catch and release the rats over here, I fill this guy up with about, uh, I don't know, halfway with water. And that's how I take care of the, the rats over here. And I just dispose of the rat elsewhere. Well, there you have it. A really simple, easy, efficient, do-it-yourself rat trap. If you have uh, mice or a rat problem on the homestead, getting into your feed, eating other things, making nests all over the place, this is a real easy uh, rat trap to make that works. Um, I was kind of skeptical at first as to whether or not it was going to work. I said it last night. Lo and behold, I caught a five-pound dog rat in the feed shed. So I know it works. So again, I hope everybody is having a good Saturday and I hope everybody stays safe this weekend amid this crisis that we still have going on. If you uh, like this video, go and give it a thumbs up to help. If you haven't subscribed to the Home and Sticks channel, Lord of Mercy. Y'all need to come on over here and give old Dan a look. Cause I'm always doing stuff and trying to catch rats.
with that being said you know it's coming damn reference showing off always gonna say it don't let nobody do your shine and i mean nobody you show enough get your shine on it's important and dan will see you and y'all in the next video